avoid cold immersion. So ice baths and being in cold water up to the neck, uncomfortably cold within the four hours after a, a training session that's designed to evoke an adaptation, either endurance, hypertrophy, or strength, because the inflammation that you experience from a hard endurance workout or from a hard strength or a hard or hypertrophy workout is the stimulus by what, that you're going to adapt to. The cold water immersion reduces inflammation and can short circuit some of that. After four hours, you're probably okay, but if you can do it a different day or you can do it before those sessions, that's better. Heat, however, can be done immediately after training and it's probably beneficial because of the way that it dilates the vascular system and delivers, perfuses the muscles and ligaments, et cetera, with more nutrients. And I should just mention yeah. that was a crucial piece of information. It's a little bit surprising. Was it surprising to you? Absolutely. Because I actually, the way I posed the question to him about cold was, I hear that getting into an ice bath or a cold water immersion after training can reduce hypertrophy, but I'm guessing it's not that big of a deal. And he said, no, it is a big deal. It will short circuit your progress. Now for people that are only interested in performance, who are doing a lot of workouts and trying to recover, but not trying to grow muscle, get stronger or build endurance, mm -hmm. then it makes sense to do cold. Cause like it, skill development. Or skill development, or you're an athlete in season, you know, so you have to, what's so great about Andy is he really points out the specific ways to train given your specific goals. So for getting swole, stay out of the ice bath after a workout. There you go. <laughs> Lex is always uh, making fun of the meatheads. I love it. Um, I put myself in the meathead category only because I don't do a real sport now. I work out and I run, um, which is I'm an aspiring out. meathead. Okay. So one of these days I'm going to get back to jujitsu or I'm going to get to jujitsu. Now, in terms of training, he has this beautiful three by five concept for strength. Pick three exercises, compound exercises, multi-joint uh, movements. Do them for, do three to five exercises for three to five repetitions per set. Rest three to five minutes and do that three to five times per week. And for details, you can, again, look to the episode. It's time stamped. But what's interesting about this is three to five times a week is a lot for a muscle group. Squatting th five times a week for five reps, meaning you're working pretty heavy meaning you're close to failure, but not failure for strength generally. What Andy taught me is that people who are training mostly for strength can do these low rep type regimens frequently because most of the adaptation is neural. And because you're not pushing to failure in most cases, you don't get that sore. And so it's the motor neurons getting the muscle fibers to contract more intensely or with more efficiency in other ways that's leading to these strength gains. And this is why powerlifters can train every day or five days a week or four days a week. For hypertrophy, I learned from Andy that the repetition range can be pretty broad. You think anywhere from six to 30 repetitions, you should do 10 sets per muscle group per week, maybe even a bit more. So high volume. High volume, but you have to go to failure or beyond in order to stimulate growth. Why does it work at such a great range of repetitions? Well, there apparently are three ways that you stimulate hypertrophy and maybe more. One is tissue micro damage to the tissue. The other is through some sort of tension based changes in the molecular gene programs of cells that lead to protein synthesis that don't, that are distinct from damage. And the other are metabolic effects of like high repetition work of superfusion of the muscle with blood. We know that third category exists because people are now doing this blood restriction training where they cuff off a muscle and they'll use a really light weight. I've done these before. You can use a five pound weight and do curls with this and you're, you are in pain and the muscles are swelling up with blood. It does lead to hypertrophy, but in general, you're not sore. You're not doing tissue damage. And by the way, don't just tourniquet it off a muscle because you have to use the proper cuffs um, because you need the blood still to flow in one direction. You can't just cinch it off or you'll, you'll potentially kill yourself if you um, get a clot or you do it wrong. So get the appropriate cuffs. They're out there. And then for endurance, I learned something really cool. So I, I work out basically, I go to the gym every other day on average, I, three or four days a week. I do that, but generally not two days in a row. It's workout next day. I'll do cardio next day. And the cardio for me is always a 30 to 45 minute jog kind of zone two cardio. Andy informed me that to build endurance while building strength and maintaining some muscle size or even building muscle size. I would be wise to take one day a week and add to that all out max heart rate work for 90 seconds at least. So do 90 seconds, then rest, and then maybe do another 90 second all out sprint. 
Or I, yeah, it, it actually has some carryover effects on, on endurance if you're doing the other stuff. And then he also said one day a week to do this workout and I haven't done it yet. Maybe we do it tomorrow, it'd be fun. Which is you run a mile, you ask yourself, how long did that take? Let's say it took eight minutes. Then you walk or rest for eight minutes. Then you run another mile as fast as you can. And then you rest for the equivalent period. And you do that one to three times once per week. So you do, and so as an all around fitness program, it make, you could collapse this into something where you say, okay, you're gonna work out with the weights for about an hour every other day. Maybe take two days off every once in a while, maybe not. You're going to do six to 15 repetitions. You're gonna to push to failure on some of those, not all, because some of those are designed to build more strength. You're not going to failure and heavier. Some are designed for hypertrophy, higher rep, and going to failure. And then on off days, you're gonna jog for 30 to 45 minutes. But for two days a week, you're either at the end of your jog or whatever, you're gonna do some all out sprints for 90 seconds and then rest and repeat. And for another day, you're going to do these mile repeats that's a pretty that's a pretty large chunk of exercise movement but if you kind of thread through the middle of all that what you end up with is some decent strength building protocols some decent hypertrophy some cardiovascular training that establishes the so-called a base or a so-called base so you're not going to get really good at anything you're not going to become a marathoner this way an optimizing marathon you're not going to optimize powerlifting you're not going to optimize hypertrophy but for the typical person 75 percent of people 75 percent of the time they want some muscle they want some strength they want some endurance and they want the capacity to sprint to the to the security gate without um you know leaving a lung in the terminal so it's for like functional stuff like your yeah. life going up the stairs is easier yeah moving about yeah all the kind of just regular life. yeah and i should mention that cold showers after training don't seem to short circuit the um the training effect to the same extent that immersion in cold water does and that really speaks to the fact that cold showers even though they can provide some of the adrenaline for the mental effects of like oh i have a lot of adrenaline in my system from a cold shower and i can remain calm there's there's utility to that it's not going to have the same metabolic effects or other positive effects that cold water exposure has been shown to have and that's unfortunate because most people have access to cold showers. Not everyone has access to a cold dunk or an ice dunk. But um, here in um, Austin, you have this place. And no, they don't pay me to say this, but I always like going to this place whenever I'm telling this place, Kuya. Mm -hmm. And they've got a sauna and a couple ice yeah. baths. And they even have those salt tanks that you can float on the surface. They have ice baths there? They have cold water immersion. It's pretty cold. Still haven't done an ice bath. Really? I need to, yeah, I need to. You're rushing. You'll probably get in and, and you won't even. Yeah, know. what is this? What's the big deal yeah, exactly. here? Exactly. Or people pay for this. <laughs> I did a post, right, of you as a baby. Yeah. It's an You know, I had to go deep to get that photo of Lex um, in a bassinet in the snow. Yeah. Because in Russia, they actually did this for a long time. They thought that it, and indeed, it does build the immune system to expose babies to the cold. I don't. I still don't know where you got that photo, and then you were able to find exactly the right. It was. It was great. It was great. You research. didn't have a tie on, but you had all the look and seriousness <laughs> that you do now. So clearly, nature nurture. Clearly, you were born with it.